Hello and welcome to an entirely different type of video I usually do. But I guess now that 2023 comes slowly to an end, it's a good time to reflect on the state of IL-2 Great Battles, its future and the air combat simulation genre in general. And more specifically, I personally will focus on the multiplayer side of things. Usually in the past I distanced myself quite a bit from these long-term uh, things or strategies, what mattered the most was that I personally had fun with the things I do. And I had lots of fun with IL-2, creating videos and playing the game. I still play and make videos to some extent, but I never followed a strategy of any kind with my channel. I kinda meandered from video to video, made content of stuff I had fun with. Since I had the most fun with IL-2 as a simulation, I stuck with that even though that was not in the best interest in regards of the YouTube game, and even led to a few video series I could not complete or they took ages to complete. But this is how I wrote this channel basically. Video creation for me needs to be fun, otherwise I won't do it. So I basically live in the moment. The lack of a m strategy didn't matter too much, since my main game, IL-2, always was active and had a future. There was content coming, people remained interested, and my channel steadily grew without me really trying too much. I had and still have my YouTube channel niche I always wanted. But now things seem to change a little. IL-2 is now at the end of its life cycle. The last few aircraft for IL-2 Great Battles will be released in the next couple of weeks and months, and from that point on there won't be any new content, most likely at least. Not that I expect that the game won't be played anymore, it will be played I believe, but I will talk more about the future in a moment. A portion of the uh, community will stop playing in the next couple of weeks and months, because th these kind of players, if we want to put them in some category, category, need new stuff every couple of weeks and months to keep them entertained. They want to taste new things and stuff. This is not the core crowd, but these players exist. But I currently do notice a distinct trend downwards, which goes beyond that trend. Not that much in regards of yeah, player count, but, more, but the change is more subtle and is even subjective, I would say. First and for me most noticeable change is that players I always flew with are not playing the game anymore. I notice that my videos receive far less comments and views, and this of course could have other reasons, but still. I personally too care much less about the game or its flyouts. I load it up and have fun, no doubt, but it's not this intense f uh, fascination anymore. For example in LA5F with a bubble canopy would have led to a huge fascination on my side and I would have bought that plane on a whim. But I know it's released now since last week I believe. But I haven't touched it, I haven't even looked at it, I haven't bought it even. So this is really new for me. And like I said, I'm not alone with this. The reasons for the lack of enthusiasm are surely a combination of a couple of factors. Some players are just burnt out from the game. Many, including me, have spent hundreds and thousands of hours in IR2 during the pandemic and are now just happy to do something else. Another reason is that most players I know are between yeah, approximately 25 and 40 years old. And this is also the main demographic of my YouTube channel. So they start or already have families, which of course lead to less time in game. Or they shift, them, or they shift their priorities to something else, like to, towards their career or fitness and exercise, for example. Very common at that age. Also, current conflicts play surely a role. After the Russian invasion of Ukraine, player counts tanked hard. After all, this is a game about war. It's a game, but people want distractions and don't want to be reminded of the ugly world in their pastime. The developers are also Russian, which is a sad topic, I have to say. And while I don't believe that every single develop uh, developer supports this war, Playing and buying a game indirectly supports the Russian government in some form. This puts the player and me as a content creator in a very difficult spot. It does not help that even the community manager, who is by the way 
an American seems to be a conspiracy numbnut who shares dumb things on Twitter and, and the resulting shitstorm was really deserved. But let's get back to the topic, otherwise I talk myself into a rage here. So overall I notice a downward trend in enthusiasm in the community, but for now and in the moment the player b servers are filled and the player base overall is quite healthy. Especially in EU afternoons and evenings and the, especially the core player base is still there and very strong. I sometimes read on reddit that the game is dead or something like this. And this is most certainly not the case. And if you look at other games in the genre, they don't have that much more players. DCS maybe has more players, but also they uh, cater to a different crowd in part. This brings us to the next point then. How does the future of IL-2 look like? Well, I personally think that it is not that dire in the short and medium term. At least not for the core player base. The interest of the core player base won't die off completely and some players will return eventually. Also the current products will be hopefully available for a fixed low price at some point in the future. This should lead into a steady stream of new players and somewhat populated servers. As long as there isn't a real competition to IL-2 at least. And there's nothing inside in the short and medium term. Also the current multiplayer admins still push out new maps and scenarios. Looking at you dear Tactical Air War and CB team and also ACG and FTC are still hosting weekly missions with 100 players and up. So if anyone wants to play IL-2 they can do that. Usually playing and finding a game is really not a big problem. The only caveat here are time zones. Europe is probably, I don't know for sure, the biggest PC market the big, biggest market for PC games. So naturally the player counts are highest around Europe's afternoons and evenings with higher counts over the weekend. I can't speak too much for other time zones. There will be less players for sure, but I doubt the servers are completely empty. Pretty sure a dedicated player can have fun in the near future. So now that we have talked about the short term, how does the distant future look like? Well, in the long term, there will be a new IL-2 product of some sorts. It's announced that the devs announce a new product in early 2024. The release of that game will of course lead to a split of the simulation player base, since it will be a new engine and it won't be part of uh, IL-2 Great Battles. However, I don't see the release coming even in 2025, who knows. and even. When first parts of that new sim are released, it will be probably poorly optimized and will older generations remember the DirectX 11 Dark Ages of IL-2 Battle of Stalingrad. I basically played IL-2 at 30 FPS for 2 or 3 years, even with a half decent hardware. The game was eating hardware alive from a new game. So during the time of the development of a new game, we are basically stuck with whatever we have right now and this will be great battles. However, the player counts will be decreasing a little bit and the main player base will be focused on events and campaigns. I personally don't mind that too much, but this will most likely happen. This leads me to my next bullet point and this is of course my channel and how to deal with the current situation in flight sims and, and especially uh, in regards of IL-2. Viewers who follow me now for years have, have certainly noticed the slowing pace of my video production and the lack of in-depth tutorials and or analysis. This was of course for all the reasons I explained earlier. I have a family with two kids, two and five years old. I also changed careers over the last few years and also have played the game for thousands of hours over a 10 year span. So at some point I just wanted to play other games I missed in that time. Did I mention at some point how good Red Hat Redemption 2 is? It's ridiculously good. I mean look at the NPCs reacting to you, they react differently to you according to the, your past actions and there's so much detail in the world and everywhere basically. This game is 4 years old for the PC at least and this game looks still stunning. The world is so detailed and the weather looks so nice, it's so convincing. 
I'm on my second playthrough now and I really take my time. I go hunting and listen to all the gang members talking. Great stuff, can recommend. Anyway, I digress, but back to the topic. So what I did while my video production pace was slowing down was spending, of course, more time with my family. I um, played other games, like single player games, like I mentioned, and I actually exercised more, which was really needed after the pandemic time. So. I still played IL2 and made gameplay videos. The videos are still well received overall and I will continue to make these. However, I think I will remain at this kind of slow pace. I also altered a little bit how I create my videos for the last month or two. In the past, I was basically entering my uh, man cave once per week for four hours straight or even five hours straight and was able to crank out one gameplay video on a Sunday, for example, or for a Sunday. I was going into my Minecraft on a Saturday. This was very taxing, since it was hard to carve out that amount of time each week and was, that time was carved out of my family time. Now, instead of this, I make a plan which video I want to release next. I write down what needs to be done to create that particular video. From these notes, I break down the video into chunks. I try to break that video up into approximately 15 to 30 minute pieces of work. These chunks on the list, what needs to be done basically each day, and then I will try to complete one chunk a day. If it does not work out on a particular day, that's fine, then I do it tomorrow. Seven to 14 days, I have a new video done. I can squeeze these chunks much better in my daily life, I hope I will be able to stick to this because it yields results, I guess. With this kind of production method, I was finally able to complete my How to Spitfire series. By the way, if you're interested, I digress again, I guess. It is a bit rambly, this part of a video, I, I, I assume. But if you're interested that I create more of these how-to videos, let me know in the comments. Because the view counts on, the, on these videos are dwindling and I don't think they are really worth my time. However, I also think it would be a pity if I missed the opportunity to make, for example, a how-to on the BF9K4 or the Focke Wolf uh, 190 D9. So if the demand is there, I really would like to continue. But like I said, the views are going down. And so this is basically what I currently plan to do in IL2. I will continue to make gameplay videos, albeit at a lower pace, slower rate, but I will continue to make these and I will also make um, some more elaborate videos, maybe tactics or something like this, but also at a reduced rate. But beyond IL2, what do I want to do there? I guess I need to look into other sims, which are basically also interesting. And of course, DCS comes to mind there. So I'm very interested to try out World War II DCS again. I did in the past, but DCS progressed quite a bit and uh, yeah I want to try it again even though I really dislike how they are selling uh, their products. I have the Spitfire, the P51, the D9, the bf 9 K4 and also I have Normandy 1.0 and uh, the assets pack for that. If the experience is good and I like what I see I will make videos. I see Greg playing it and uh, having a lot of fun so I will be maybe able to have fun too but I'm but I'm not so sure, but the game needs to convince me and if the game is good, it will convince me. Maybe you guys can tell me how to play World War II DCS these days. What do I need? Do I need to install the beta version of the game? Or do I need to install the stable version of the game? Let me know in the comments. So beyond DCS, what is what is what else is there? And far on the horizon is Jason Williams' new project, Combat Pilot. The simulation will be initially about the Battle of Midway, and it's a bit far out to be really excited for it, but of course I will keep an eye on it. Uh, I am also in contact. I guess we will see when something playable is available to us. I'm looking forward to that. But this is really it for the thoughts and opinions on the state of IL-2 the present and the future, and also a little bit about the flight sims, which are left and right of IL-2. Let me know what your opinion is and what you think about the entire affair. I know the 
end of the video the last chapter was a bit rambly and was a bit digressing but why not it's my channel i can do what i want here see you in the next one